Hey everybody, one that always bored, never boring. If you've been subscribing to the channel for any length of time, you will know that I am doing a Hero Quest restoration project at the moment. So today we're going to take a look at painting the mightiest of heroes. We are going to paint the Barbarian and we will see how long it takes for someone in the comments to mention the musculature. Of course, as this is a predominantly unclothed Barbarian figure, the focus here is going to be on skin tones and I have started by spray undercoating with Corax White. But I wanted to draw your attention to the head of this particular miniature. You can see there is actually a mark, a divot in the head there, and that is where the miniature was twisted out of the sprue by the previous owner of this game. That's why you don't twist miniatures out of the sprues, you don't want that happening, so always use clippers. To rectify this problem on my miniature, I'm going to use some liquid green stuff. I'm going to fill the hole, blend it in and then sort of try and rough it up and texture it up a little bit so it looks a little bit like hair. And when that's completely dry, I will overpaint it with Corax White and we're ready to begin. And as you can see, that's what it looks like after the repair job. For the skin, we're starting with Bugman's Glow. I want this barbarian to look tanned, quite dark skinned. So I'm going to use a technique here that I have used quite a bit with skin tones and I like this particular technique because you can keep layering it up as much as you want to using as many layers as you feel is necessary and going as bright as you want with it as I want quite a tanned barbarian and I don't want to spend too long on this particular painting job I'm only going to do a couple of layers but you can keep adding to this and the more layers you add the more detail and more definition and the better the miniature will look but first of all, we're going to do two thin coats of Bugman's Glow over all of the exposed skin areas. And when that's completely dry, we're going to apply Reichland Flesh Shade over all of those skin tones. You don't want to use a lot of flesh tone here. I've put too much on the face there, but what you will notice I will do is I will keep going back to it and drawing it out and moving it over the miniature because we just want a little bit of definition here. We don't want a lot of um, heavy pigmentation on the skin tones. We just want to help define all those details. So I'm going to keep drawing it out and making sure it doesn't pull. When it's drying, I'm going to use a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone to start picking out the details. And this mix is about 60% Bugman's Glow, 40% Cadian Flesh Tone. Uh, you can start with a slightly darker mix if you want, but that's up to you. And what you'll see I'm doing here is I am just going over all of the most raised parts of the skin and picking them out with that slightly lighter colour. And I will go all around all of the details in this way. And really you can do just one of these if you want to, if you want it to be really dark. I'm going to do another layer of colour over the top of this. But you can see that's what it looks like after the first application. What I'm doing now is a second coat and this time I am mixing, it's a about 60 40 again but the other way around so it's about 60 percent cadmium flesh tone 40 percent bugman's glow and i'm applying over the most raised details of the skin parts really just picking out the most obvious details and the areas where the light would most likely fall and of course by focusing that highlight we're getting gradations of color in the skin and as I mentioned before, you can then do another layer if you want and another going brighter and brighter, but I am fine with it like that. So I'm going to move on now to the hair and I'm using black for the hair and black's difficult to paint because you can't really shade it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to apply a base coat of Abaddon black over the whole thing. Of course, we want to be careful not to get any on the skin because the skin is completely done at this point. So be a little bit careful with that, but it doesn't matter if we get it over any other parts of the miniature. They're gonna get painted afterwards. So I'm being very careful here. And once we have a solid application of Abaddon Black, I'm switching to Eschen Gray, but you can use any dark gray and it does need to be a dark gray. And I'm using a thin brush and I am just picking out the most raised areas of the hair. Again, just sort of focusing where light would naturally fall, trying to get some sense of the definition and the fibers of the hair. And then I'm going to wolf gray, which is a very bluish gray because I want to get that sense of 
the black being glossy you get that sense of like a bluish purplish hue when black shimmers in the light sometimes that's what we're trying to get here we're trying to get a glossy hair look and you can see that on the top here I'm just very very lightly very gently picking out some lines just to add that sense of definition and highlighting and you could leave it like that really but I want to tone it all back down and help tie it all back together so I'm going to use some Nuln oil and I'm just going to put a thin coat of Nuln oil over that whole piece of hair and that will just knock down the colors again tie the colors together and make it all look a little bit more natural and that will be the hair finished we're now going to add some gold, some Balthazar gold, and we're going to paint the hilt of the sword, the pommel of the sword, and the belt, which is obviously some kind of magic girdle for the barbarian. And this is just to get a, a slightly brighter shining color onto the miniature, really. A bit of a change from all those skin tones, and of course, the boots and the loincloth will be brown as well, so we want something that's just a little bit brighter and a little bit shimmering, just add a little bit more interest. And when you're painting with metallic paints, you will get metallic flecks in your water. So you're going to want to replace your water in a moment. Before we do that, we will just quickly paint the sword with lead belcher. It's always a good idea to do all of your metallics at the same time if possible. And then once you've done that, change your water out because you don't want any of those little metallic flecks to get in things like the fur, the skin, the hair, or anything like that. With fresh water, we are now going to do Mournfang Brown over the loincloth and the boots. Obviously, at this point, we need to be careful. We're getting to the final stages of the miniature, so we don't want to accidentally paint over anything that is already finished. So the belt is finished, the skin is finished. So we just need to be a bit careful. And if you want to, you can paint the trim around the top of the boots a different color. I am not going to. Uh, you can insert a Daisy Ridley meme here where she holds up a plaque saying, guess who's not going to paint the trim? This guy. And of course, we've all been waiting for it. Agrax Earthshade. It wouldn't be a painting guide from me without a bit of this slapped on somewhere. We are going to use it to add some definition to the boots and to the loincloth. We're also going to apply it around the belt and the hilt of the sword because it just knocks down that shimmering metallic gold, makes it look a little bit worn, a little bit weathered, a little bit used. Which is only fitting for a barbarian who spends his time plodding around in dark dungeons. Of course, be careful not to drip it all over the skin because you don't want to ruin what you've already painted. And then we're going to use a little bit of null oil and this is just for the actual blade of the sword again just to knock down that shimmer we're now switching to steel legion drab you don't actually really need to do this if you don't want to but you can go back to the loincloth and to the boots and just pick out the raised details with steel legion drab it helps those colors pop helps to define all of those details and just finishes it off a little bit. We're now switching to Stormhost Silver and I'm going to do an edge highlight on the sharp bits of the blade. So I'm using the side of my brush here and I'm just running it up those straight edges to add a little bit of shimmer. And then once I've done that, what I will also do is working from the top of the sword on the flat sides, I'm just going to run the brush slightly down and feather it out into the uh, lead belcher and null oil so the top of the blade is shimmering and it slowly transitions to the darker metal now the last thing we have to do the eyes i'm using ulthuan gray to dot in the eyes you can use white but i tend to find that if you use white the eyes look quite staring and if you use something like ulthuan gray it's just a little bit less stark you need to be really careful here you need to brace the miniature you need to hold your breath you need to use a fine brush and you just need to carefully dot in those white areas. And then we have to dot in the pupils with Abaddon Black. And this is the really difficult bit. Get your insane detail brush, brace the miniature against your hand, really hold your breath, and just take your time, be really careful. I tend to find that 
making it so that the miniature is looking off to one side is easier because then there's less risk of painting the miniature so that the eyes look cross-eyed. So in this case, you'll see that the miniature is looking off towards the left side of the camera. And uh, I'll do a close-up in a moment so you can see that a little bit better. If you do make any mistakes, you just need to touch up around the eye again with the uh, skin tones. But hopefully, you will persevere and you will have eyes on your barbarian. And this was the best that I could do. But you can see he is looking off to one side and that just makes it a little bit easier to paint and uh, reduces the risk of him looking cross-eyed, which can happen if you try and make the miniature look straight forwards. But that is finished. That's all I'm going to do on this guy. Obviously he does need the base painted, but I'm not going to do that in this particular video because I have done a separate video showing how I am painting flagstones on all of my Hero Quest miniatures and he will be getting the same treatment there. So I guess that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.